the idea behind the X-ray eye template is that it's um, a cultural intervention really in a school, in a whole school. Um, and you take the idea and you take a core group of children and say, what do you think of this? Um, this isn't a performance, this isn't a script, this really is a recipe and the ingredients are other people and what's inside them and how they feel and what they make of the games and the exercises and the things that we've already discovered that we like and we're good at working with and we're good at imparting them. We've found our own style of doing that, of transmitting what we've got. But now, this is what happens when you take that idea and attempt, and today is the first attempt, to allow it to Cascade is one word, right through a morning. There is a question, and the question is both an artistic one and a curricular one, an organisational one. Where is the space? I think this is my main question. Where is the space in the day? Where is the space in the school? Where is the space in the teacher's timetable? Where is the space in the national curriculum? And where is the space in every single individual child that genuine, free emotional expression can be allowed to take place? Where is that space? Okay, where's, where are we going? Places, everyone. I have absolutely no idea where the gym is. And uh, we're lost. Hello there. Hello. Are you coming to play? Oh, nobody's here yet, anyway. What's happening in the space? Um, here we have, at the moment, in order, um, the seven movements that we call the takeaway of X-ray eyes. And they're described using what we call objective description. It actually comes from uh, voicing with blind performers uh, what people are doing without colouring it emotionally. So for example, this is hand on top of head, not surprise. This is palms up, arms stretched forward, not stop. This is hands to side of head, mouth wide open. But it looks so like anger that we think we'll change it because it's prejudicing what you might see. This, number six, is the one that the child chooses completely afresh every day in their warm-up, where they're asked to make a movement that says, this is me, here, now, today. Not, this is how I feel today. This is me, here, now, today. And this pointing one um, is itself enough to write a book about. Um, it is argued that this is one gesture on its own that distinguishes us from all the other primates because it says, this is me and that's you. Uh, but it's just called point. It's up to you to read it. So that's the very simple system which um, in all its possible combinations, including dance combinations, April Fool joke combinations, guessing game combinations, playground game combinations and focused dramatic explorations um, in all of those ways that it might be used, which are up to the child. Um, this you will see percolating through all the spaces in the school today. One, two,
about doing a group of movements like that is it's actually, it makes them concentrate for a minute. So every class, just to at least, fo they have to follow the people in front of them. So they may not be totally learning it fast, but you suddenly get them all in the same place trying to go through the moves together. I see the ones that people kind of prefer or the ones that they put immediate meaning to. And of course I'm quite interested in the ones that they don't and seeing what happens there. Because some of them are, are, have things that you can almost see immediately or you know, they're, they're really clear expressions. And so sometimes seeing the, the other ones I like, I like the more open sort of interpretation there. Okay, what are they feeding? This guy is feeding that angry. Yeah. We feed Jennifer angry, frustrated, devastated, annoyed, shocked, surprised, amazed, under pressure, horrific, happy, drunk, nice, grumpy, moody, uptight, depressed, Excited, spectacular, superb, tom tempered, hyper, insane, anxious. What does it say? Anxious. anxious. Scared. <laughs> angry. <laughs> sad. <laughs> shocked. Wow. Flabbergasted. I think now to spell that actually. The pictures were particularly successful, I think. It's quite an easy game and I think the kids of different ages could look at them and with some of them I talked to them about these are historical images and they're from two or three hundred years ago and they seem quite interested in that. And others it's just like a really simple game. There's a face and you've got to say what are they feeling. That's I think it's happy. Angry. Angry. Shocked. Shocked and sad. There we go. The chimpanzee is singing. He needs a kiss. There's a lot of romance around in the school, I've noticed. Kissing, people being amazed at girls. Hungry, happy, frightened, generous, silly, tired, crazy. That's the kissing chimpanzee. He's got a lot of feelings. I'm interested in the history of the expression of the emotion. And one sort of consistent tradition through the centuries has been the idea that there's this universal language, that all of us, all human beings, have the same way of expressing certain human passions and emotions and that you can read that through the face, not only the face but also the body. Uh, and I'm interested in the fact that there's this idea that there's this universal language of emotion but that it seems to change over time and it changes from one place to another. So you've got sad and smelly and what else? And disgusting. And something I've always wanted to do is to put some of the historical images, which is what I had today, from books of physiognomy and science of expression and put them to people in the 21st century, kids or adults, and say, what do you think this face shows? Evil. Do you think number one's evil? Why do you think people said that? Evil, bad guy, sinister. So they're kind of, he's got, closing his eyes. Because some people might say he looked happy, because he's, you know, isn't he smiling? But he looks evil at the same time. Yeah, that's an interesting one. You're <laughs> Uh, I'm Jo, I'm the Acting Deputy and Inclusion Manager of Osmani School. Okay. And what's today about for you? Um, giving the children a chance to share what they've been doing over the last few weeks, but also just showing the, the children can be teachers as well as learners and just celebrating all the wonderful things that they've been doing. It is very important. We want our children that grow up into adults that can share their feelings, that can say how they're what's happening. We don't want children growing up to adults that aren't able to communicate. So it's important. So we, we give it the space that reflects that, I think.